Hey everybody, welcome to the Thematic Podcast. I am Craig Nicholas Brown. Whoa, Daniel Scott Hunt. Scott? Scott, yeah. I didn't pick it. Agent Michael Scarn. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking about. Michael, Michael Scott. Scarn? Yeah, kind of <laughs> like Michael that. Scott made me think of Michael. <laughs> Threat Level Midnight. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I man. didn't pick it. Obviously, it was given to me, but... Yeah. Speaking of Threat Level Midnight... DSH somebody... dish. <laughs> somebody just sent me a quiz... And it was a Bible in the office quiz. And it was 10 questions from the office, 10 questions from the Bible. And I guess he sent it to 500 people. And everybody got more answers on the office right than the Bible. Now, in my opinion, the Bible questions were very hard. Okay, well, there you go. But he pointed out that like threat or uh yeah threat level midnight for example was only mentioned in two episodes in the entire series and yet everybody knew what that was so this is not the subject well, of today's episode there, the, to be fair there's an entire episode where he watches the threat level midnight movie with holly there and everyone watch i mean totally but i guess it i guess it's still a good challenge to be like Let's, let's try not to know movie or TV quotes more than our Bible. Yeah, no, that's fair. And that was a rabbit trail at the beginning of I this episode. I love it, episode. though. I'm here for this. This is what I want to do. Because I, I actually know a lot about The Office, too, probably. I would probably pass that Office test pretty well. Yeah. I'm not trying to flex or anything. I'm just saying I have watched The Office through many times. Well, Okay. You Send wanna, it to you me. You want to talk about it on this episode? No, I just, I'm just, I don't know why I'm saying that. Maybe we'll talk about that on a different yeah. episode. <laughs> just the the questions of how do we balance all of the different things that we could give our time and attention to in life? Maybe video games. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Craig found out I play video games. <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> Daniel and our and our filmer Dylan were talking about this video game. Man, this should be a whole episode. Bro. We, let's do it. 100. percent Yeah. You let's do, do it, it right now. Yeah, let's do it Dylan, right now. You want to do it right now? Let's do it right now, because I, All I, right. I have actually processed my video game consumption through the lens thematically. Okay, and I've spoken to my there. wife about it. This is definitely relevant to a lot of people. So right. we're gonna do this question next. Ep- so here's the question for today's episode. All right, what is the balance between pursuing explicitly godly things? Mm-hmm. Because you know, in some senses we probably have done this service the church at, by dividing oh these are spiritual things and these are not spiritual right. things but for the sake of the conversation what's the what's the balance between pursuing explicitly godly things such as prayer bible reading thematic studying mm-hmm. and all that and all everything else sports shopping friends movies video games yeah watching the office yeah whatever that we do with our time. So is there like, is there a, a a biblical commandment to spend a certain amount of time doing these things and not these things? Or how do we, how do we parse through yeah. what we give our time to? And then just because it came up, when you start to realize that you know more about a TV show than the Bible. Yeah. Or if you're really honest and you're like, man, I cheer hard for my favorite football team. But if I'm really honest, when I'm worshiping God in church, it's right, I'm barely kind into of it. bland. Yeah. Like, what do we do when we recognize that some of those things are out of order? Yeah. Yeah, and they might be. Yeah. So let me start by asking you a question to to get your perspective. Okay. Do you think so before we started filming, Dylan and I were talking yeah, about yeah, a video yeah. so game this- and Craig came in pretty hard <laughs> on the like you gay he literally was like, Oh, I play a video game, blah, blah, and he did the nerd impression <laughs> as if we were nerds. And Which you it, are <laughs> it, it, fair enough. And it seemed like you thought that would, and you said, you said, Daniel, do you really think playing a video game is how you should spend your time? Is that fair? Okay. Yeah. Is that, that at least sounds what, really judgy. No, I, 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 what, <laughs> which, not trying to be. which it does. It was what I said was, do you really think that doing a 24 hour spree of a full day of playing the same video game oh, yeah, is, is the true. wisest thing for Daniel Hunt to do at this time. And I specifically said Daniel Hunt because you are a very busy person. Yes, that's true. I am. 
So, but let's talk about let's it. Let's talk because, about it. Because so you for the value record, Sabbath yes. a lot. Yeah. And maybe your answer to my um, provoking question is that exactly that is what you need to do because you're resting. Yeah. In order to get filled up to work the other six days. Yeah. I just was being... I was we were being we were being friends because but it comes I, up because you have a family because and the you, Bible says out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks yeah which means when people uh, jest in kind there can be something behind it there is and it for me I was thinking you're a very busy person yeah. and you you make a lot of commitments mm-hmm. and you want to to to, to do a lot and yeah so I was genuinely wondering like. Is twenty four hours of video games yeah. really the smartest thing for you yeah. to do? So let me, so so that in was context, the question, everybody. So I play Destiny two, the video game, and and so does our filmer, and and <laughs> twice a year slash musician. Yeah, check out his band, the Sam Lighty Band. They're very good. Yeah. By the way, um, so once or twice a year they launch this new raid and they do the world's first raid race and. Back in my younger days, I was a competitive video game player. I was paid to play video games. It was been a part of my life since I was young. So I still enjoy it. And so once or twice a year, you get 24 hours to complete this like really difficult challenge. And so I do I do that once or twice a year. So just for context, it happens once or twice a year. Okay. And, um, and by the way, just pause real quick. Yeah. If you're watching this or listening and you think, I am not into video game, you do got to know, and I, I need to know, this is a massive part of culture right now especially video games are huge video games yeah it's a trillion YouTube, dollar YouTube. i mean mm-hmm. my kid you know so mm-hmm. yeah. kids kids that want to be professional gamers yeah all of that in fact i heard i hear that the fastest growing air quote sport esports is esports which i am investing in a company other, that does esports that's so, a whole other discussion so, whether ch- that's check a sport this out. so but it's a huge no, no, growing hear, hear, hear me thing out. in the world Early on in my marriage, I've been married 18 years. Early on in my marriage, video games came up because I played competitively when I was 18, 19. I got married when I was 23. Uh, It was still a huge part of my life. We had moved to Olympia, Washington, where I was a youth pastor. And youth kids play video games. I was playing a lot of video games. Mm -hmm. And my wife was like... Oh, no. Is this going to be my life? Yeah, totally. And I was hanging out with my friends from Portland, Oregon, where I'm from. And we'd play the video game together. I'm like, this is how I hang out with my friends. And Marie said something really profound. She was like... Yeah, but we're married. Like, <laughs> would it be healthy if your friends were here nine hours a day in the evening, every night? And I'm like, oh no, I did a bad. So I obviously, I really did. I repented. It was one conversation. It was just like a wake up hmm. call. I didn't, my excuse was, this is how I build relationships with my friends. We're distant. Duh, this is awesome. He's like, but is it healthy for a married man to hang out with his friends eight hours a night or six hours a night? No, it isn't. Okay, so this is a perfect example. Yeah, so I do had you to do think some that, walking it back. Was her question the duration, the consistency? Was it the it was dura- the priority? Was it the priority and duration in light of how much you spend with her? Like, if you spent eighteen hours with her, would she be fine with you oh, doing? You know, Marie, it, she's not like needy at no, all. No, I for time. I know that. But what that's she was like, was being an incredible spouse who saw something in my life that was good, but out of balance was bad. Right. That's what it is. So is the principle in regards to video games, the office, sports, food, whatever, anything, is it, is it balance? Is it moderation? Is it I what's think, the appropriate amount of time yeah. and attention to what thing? Yeah. Well, your question was sort of shrouded in, you're so busy, you have a lot of commitments, and some of those commitments aren't always getting fulfilled. Like, is playing video games really a good use of your time? Like, are you accomplishing your goal? And obviously, I'm overweight, too. And so we talk about everything on podcasts. Like, shouldn't you be working out instead of playing video games? Shouldn't you be reading your Bible? It's like, well, you can always say that about anything that's not directly giving you a physical benefit or a spiritual benefit. Um, my viewpoint is, so when I play video games, I play them on my Sabbath. Uh, it's something that I just enjoy. I have a lot of responsibilities. There's no responsibility. I just hang out with a few friends and we kill, kill aliens. It's awesome. You know, and for um, you, it's restful and it, 
It fills up. It's your recharging. Virtue. Yeah. Okay. So um, I used to golf a lot. That's what I enjoyed doing. It's like a low impact sport. Mm -hmm. I used to say it's a sport where people like one of the rules of the sport is people have to stay away from you. <laughs> <laughs> and I get peopled out and I like want to just hang with like two or three friends. Mm -hmm. um, but we recently went through a season like after COVID, we like we talked about on prior. So we lost everything and yeah. I didn't have the money to yeah. keep golfing and I'm in a rebuilding phase. Yeah. And so watching a movie is free, like basically free or playing a video game is really cheap and so i replaced that golf time which was usually five or six hours on a saturday with video games so that's what i did um i did actually process that decision both with my wife we literally talked to my kids and i'm not like i don't want to make it feel like it's like oh every time you do something that's not just you know you know you're not taking communion or doing the bible you have to like get permission right but in a loving healthy marriage you're like hey listen like, I want to do this thing. I just want to make sure you're cool with it. And like, here's, here's the, the, the bumpers I'm going to put in place to make sure like, I don't go hog wild with it. Mm -hmm. You know, here's what I want to do. And my wife's like, dude, I love that you enjoy it. And so she bought a little recliner on like Craigslist to sit in the room and she hangs out and watches her stories as we joke. She's like, that's her stories. And I play video games. We sit next to each other and it's awesome. And we love it. That's how we, uh, one of the ways we relax on the cheap. Yeah. So are you okay with that? Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I love all I, You know what? That. I should have called you before I started that and just said, Hey Craig, I'm thinking about doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no. And obviously I know. So, so here's what I know about you is if, if, if you were, let's say genuinely so engaged in video games that it was evident that that was more important to you than your relationship with the Lord or your wife and your kids, yeah. then I'd be having a serious conversation with 100%, you as a brother. A hundred percent, yeah. So that's obviously not the case. So in that sense, the priorities are in order. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you're just choosing to do something with 24 hours that I disagree with. That's fine. <laughs> Once or twice a year. No, no, I, I don't have a problem with it. But in... So let's jump back to this quiz, okay? That yeah. This guy sent out. Because that is that, a, not that a quiz is categorical evidence that I care exhaustive. more about the office than the Bible. Yeah. It has to do with the questions that were asked. Blah blah blah. But but let's just say that if somebody was really honest with themselves, that they do recognize, man, I do love the Seahawks more than I love God yeah. or whatever the thing is. Well, that is now, I don't think that's true. And I don't think anyone would say that, but here's what I think. I think the office is more entertaining than the Bible. I think the office is easier to consume than the Bible. And I think that's where things like, um, uh, the show, the, the, the show about Jesus. That's awesome. The chosen, the chosen is amazing. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that Christendom churches christians made was when tv came out we're like this is satanic and awful and there's so many bad things we're going to stay away from it we need to own the new areas of media because we have a message that gives life and literally like why isn't our stuff as awesome as the office like honestly that's kind of an indictment on us a little bit hmm. so it's a both and people like Read your Bible. It's life-giving. Yes, it takes a little bit of work. It's like my wife used to say, we have no patience for pistachios. Pistachios are little nuts that are hard to get open, but they're, they're delicious. delicious. That's your Bible. Have a little patience and you'll get rewarded. I was going to say, when you, you know? said, well, the office is more entertaining, you just mean like cultural, cultural. cultural thinks that because you, you don't think that. No, I love the Bible. Right. I, I'm in love with it. I love to study it and read it. Right. But and, you, you got to grow more into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for more reasons than just because the actual content is entertaining, but because you know that it feeds your life. Yes. Yes. hundred right? percent. My thing is I, I would say the here's what the test is great at doing at large. The culture knows, understands, and can assimilate content like the office and recall it mm -hmm. to me. What that should do is indicate to Christians everywhere. Like we need to get our, the word of God in an easy, accessible format. Craig Rochelle, wonderful man of God has been working on this. The Bible app is free, mm -hmm. but like what can we serve the God of creativity in the universe? Like we got to be playing at a high level here right. to, to help the vehicle of the word of God get into people's life in a, in a funny and memorable or powerful way, in my opinion. So I have a really strong viewpoint on this. I don't think it's the world's fault that they can't pick up a 3000 word book with words like Mephibosheth in it and be like, yeah, this is great. 
<laughs> no indictment on God. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to be a jerk here. I'm just saying like, we have a job to do once the Gutenberg one, well, you know, thanks Paul and the apostles for giving your life for this incredible message. How about we take it and put, get a, give it a new spin and a fresh, like, let's not change it, but let's make it accessible. Mm-hmm. I really think that's a thing that we need to be better at. You know what I heard is that there's some people that are even trying to like spread the word of God on apps like TikTok <laughs> and Instagram. Yeah. Trying to do it in an engaging way. It's, it's crazy. It's one of the reasons I'm really <laughs> excited about what you're doing. No cap. Like this is awesome. Thank you. Okay. You, so no, 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 hang on. You are <laughs> taking the word. Why I think you were so successful is because you read a verse and broke it down with your little, your little pen and you took one tidbit and and because you unpacked it they didn't have, you read it for them you underlined it for them you accompanied it with a 45 second explanation and some music people were like this is amazing it's like yeah and there's pages of it yeah yeah but you made you gave them a doorway yeah keep going yeah exactly cuz everybody has to start somewhere and yeah. it's like i i could easily just say this you is too what? advanced for a lot if of people. If you can't handle a minute, then forget you. This is re- <laughs> yeah, this is good. Re- or I could say, if you can't handle going and reading your Bible for fifteen minutes, you you missed it, and just have that attitude. Or I could say, hey, if all you can handle is a minute right now, I'll give you a minute, and hopefully yeah. you fall in love with the yeah. power behind the word. And you know and, what and that you sounds like? More of it. You know what that sounds like? It sounds like the good shepherd who's not like, okay, the one sheep, like good luck, idiot, can't find your way back to the other 99 of us. Like you deserve to be lost. Yeah. What it sounds like is the same heart of the shepherd that will walk the distance and be like, oh, you can't walk yourself? I'm gonna throw you on my shoulders and bring you back. Yeah, yeah. Like that's the heart. That's why I love it so much. We gotta well, get you. real good at it. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree, especially in regards to the areas of society we so just talk about like movies and video games and art mm-hmm. like the first time the holy spirit filled anybody do you remember this the first time he the filled. first time the bible actually says the spirit of god filled a man you remember this dylan i don't this is incredible you guys listen to this i think it would be it's David. in i think it's in exodus 37 we could look it up the very first time that the Spirit of God filled anybody... I'm about to learn something. ...was for the building of the tabernacle. And it says... Now I know the story. I didn't... Yeah. yeah I didn't... And know. it says... It says... It's the uh, artisan who designed the tabernacle, right? Yeah. I don't remember his name, though. Baz- Bazaliel or something That's like why that. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Bazinka... <laughs> He, oh yeah, he filled him for the creative purpose of designing the tabernacle, right? Yeah. Yeah. That is, I didn't realize. So there's a principle while Craig looks this up, there's a principle in the Bible called the law of first mention. And the law of first mention is not like in the Bible. It's what Bible scholars have come up with that when something first appears in the Bible, there's some significance to it, especially regarding like the purpose of the thing or like a foreshadowing of what that, that, um, topic will be about as the timeline moves forward. So this is going to be really cool. All right. So I found it here in Exodus 31 and it says this, it says the Lord said to Moses. Now this, is this whole section is all about the instructions of how to build the tabernacle, which is the, the place that God's presence is going to rest. Yeah. This is where God's presence is. It says the Lord said to Moses, see, I have called by name, Bezalel, the son of Uri, and Hur of the tribe of Judah. But and God I, pronounced it properly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As is this, I have filled him with the spirit of God, with ability and with intelligence, with knowledge and craftsmanship to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and bronze in cutting stones for setting and carving wood and every craft and behold, I've appointed with him Aholiab, the son of some guy in the Bible, and the tribe of Dan. <laughs> and I have given... The angel reading it. The son of a <clears throat> son guy. You know who you are. Step yeah, forward, read please. Yeah, read it on your own. Read it on your own. <laughs> uh, and I've given 
all able men ability that they may make all that I've commanded you. And it's talking about all about designing in beautiful craftsmanship. And so it is significant that the first time it specifically this says awesome. the spirit of God filled somebody was to create beautiful things that God can rest in. Come on. And so the, the fact to create beautiful things that God can rest in, <laughs> that is legit. Yeah. No, explicitly the tabernacle but i think the principle that's you know, it so why is why would christian music be considered you know cheesy why would christian shows or movies mm -hmm. or art oh that's just christian art yeah like we have the spirit of god come on the creator uh oh we're gonna preach we now. were created Woo! to create i love so it we we should we should be on the front yeah. lines of all these yeah. things yeah makers need to make yeah the, it, it's it, i would say the chosen is a beautiful thing that was made that God can rest in. Absolutely. And it, he's, his goodness is transmitted through it. The, 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 now, never, but because of the subject matter, some people in the world might not watch it, but when they do, I would be confident that they would agree that it's beautiful and well-made and well-acted, and that's the thing. Yeah. And, and so um, you got here because you're like speaking of art and video games and music and stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah. We, I, but I love that. That's the principle. Now, Destiny 2 isn't that. You know, that's just so no, we got two yeah. principles yeah, that kind of diverge. So let me just pack it up. Okay. There are, there's a great, I love C.S. Lewis, obviously. I quote him all the time in this. He has um, this great, uh, I thought it was a mere Christianity. It might be in something else, but he talks about like the enemy. Oh, it's in the screw tape letters. He's talking about the enemy will get you to put down a book that you really enjoy to pick up a book that you think might be important. And he's talking about that God made all things for us to enjoy mm -hmm. and that we connect with God when we're having joy and enjoying his creation, enjoying beautiful things like that is part of life. And I thought that was like really mm -hmm. potent. I'm like, man, because a book is often the work of another person. I can, I can get behind like, well, God made the earth, go enjoy the earth. Like, okay, that's cool. So if you go, you know, fishing or hiking, like you're connecting with God mm -hmm, in some way. Mm -hmm. But like, I believe, and I agree that we can connect with God through the work that other people have made that is just beautiful and amazing mm -hmm. there's so so um my point is i think if you're going to consume or enjoy anything enjoy it in moderation put it in the right priority stack in your life and it's okay to enjoy things you don't always have to be working or reading your bible there are moments in your life that are set aside to just enjoy the great things of life yeah would you agree which is looping us back to the actual well, this episode's been all over the place. No, it's awesome though. But it's this been is good. the real stuff. And and this this is how real life happens, right? You mm -hmm. don't sit down and have a conversation typically with somebody about yeah. one thing and one thing only. Yeah. But we, but one thing leads to another, and that's this is part of how you become thematic. So that's good. So we talked about the art, and so but you looped it back for mm -hmm. us to the original thought of mm -hmm. the balance between things, and we have just a minute or two left. So. You, re you mentioned the right priority mm -hmm. in moderation mm -hmm. um, as, as long as it's not sinful. Of yeah, course. as long as it's not the pleasure provided is sinful in nature. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So just one more time real quick, though. What, what do you do if you recognize that something is out of order in oh. your priorities, in your... Things are things are more important to you than your relationship with God. Yeah, I agree with you. You don't need to spend your whole day reading your Bible and praying. You don't need to be a monk or a nun. Well, yeah. But if if you're really honest and all these other things are more priority and have more of your heart, then what what are you to do? Yeah. The, well, in the question, you realize it. So what I have done um, in both circumstances relating to video games, my wife talked to me when I was out of bounds and the mo you know, so I didn't realize it on my own. It was brought to my attention, but then I think your reaction should be humility mm -hmm. and then repentance and then alignment. So, so in your example, was there a season then that you stepped away from video games altogether to yeah. recalibrate? Yeah, yourself? that's hundred percent what I did. I okay. went cold turkey. So now you're there again, but you're, yeah. you're there because you can be there in a healthy place. Place. Yeah, so far it has been, and if it ever becomes an unhealthy place, either hopefully the Holy Spirit, and this is what I believe, and I think I can prove in the Bible, is that 
um, w- when Marie comes and talks to me, that's always the second voice. He's already been telling me and I've been ignoring it because <laughs> that's how he tells us to talk to people. He says, you go to them first and then you bring a witness with you. And I think he does the same thing. He'll tell you first be like, Hey, I think this is out of line. And if you don't listen, he'll bring someone that loves <laughs> you. <laughs> right. Wow. And so when someone brings something to me, I try to remember that this is the second time I've actually been told, Wow. you know? And so I try to respond um, in humility. I try. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. always successful. Sometimes I'm defensive. Sometimes I'm blind. And and when you're defensive and blind, you're in real trouble. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I did go cold turkey to recalibrate because the moment the second voice is like, Hey, this is out. I'm like, Oh man, I really missed it the first time. So I probably need to go without it to get back into alignment. Yes. That was a long answer for a short question. Sorry. Awesome. Well, good stuff uh, yeah. on the fly. Yeah. So if anyone's asking, are video games a sin? The answer is no. But I would say if you enjoy something, make, I don't play like GTA 5. I've never played it personally, like just because of what I've heard is in it. There are video games I wouldn't play. Um, so use your Holy spirit. Anything that doesn't come from faith is a sin. Make sure you have no convictions about what you're doing and then do it in moderation in the right priority and, uh, keep people in your life that will check you because they love you. Yeah. Keep God. Number one, number one, foam finger. (laughs) (laughs) He said, I just see the big foam fingers. God, number one. Wow. Bring that to church. Well, thanks for joining us on the Theomatic Podcast this week. Yeah. I hope that you gleaned something out of that. And I believe that the Holy Spirit can speak to you through our conversation about something that's relevant to your life. So if you have questions uh, or something that you'd like us to talk about, then send it in to us at the Podcast at gmail.com or find us on socials. And yeah. we'll see you next time. Peace.